Hey everybody, this is Josh, and I ain't know it all. Coming to you today to talk a little bit about fantasy baseball. I love fantasy baseball. Now, I will admit, there have been years I've gone a little overboard and done 20 or so baseball teams for fantasy leagues. I know, a little overboard, but you know what? I love baseball, and I'm the 90 know it all, so i got to kind of do that. Now, I don't win all my leagues, but I do a pretty good job of staying in the top five. Usually win one or two leagues each year, and once again, when you pay, play 10 or 15 leagues, winning one or two is not not a great number, but I still have fun. I usually come in the top five in about 70% of my leagues, so, so I'm going to tell you guys some of the things that I have learned doing fantasy baseball over the years, some of the things that I focus on, and some of the different variations that I do to make it more enjoyable, because honestly, when you do 10 teams, a lot of times you end up having the same team across all 10 leagues. And it gets really boring because you have the same mindset when you draft. But there's some things that I've done to make different leagues more enjoyable and a little more challenging. One of the first variations that I do personally is I draft an autograph team. So I look at all my autographs that I have and I only draft players that I have autographs of. Now, initially that was pretty tough. I didn't have a lot of great autographs. Most of my autographs were from Seattle Mariners and, well, they haven't made the playoffs in 17 years, so I didn't make the playoffs ever. But then I started going to spring training, going to minor league stadiums, getting autographs, going to the Arizona Fall League, and started building up my autograph you know, base, my foundation, and started doing some drafts using more and more of the young players, and started doing better. Now, I've got some players that I'm kind of lucky to have gotten, Clayton Kershaw, I have Chris Sale, so I've got two pretty good starting pitchers, I've got Buster Posey. I've got Gary Sanchez, so I've got some catchers, and then I've got quite a few outfielders just to list off going through. So I got, I have some pretty good options for every position, but it's just fun because then I have to really think ahead. You know, I have to really focus on who I have autographs of and who I can, you know, have to reach for early on, which guys I have to make sure that I have that spot taken care of. Now I've got a few fallback guys at every position. At catcher, I've got Mike Zunino with the Mariners. I got his autograph, so he's going to fall later in the draft. So if I miss out on, on Posey or Sanchez, I can reach down and get Zunino. At second base, I've got Joe Panic. So if I have to reach down and grab him, I can, but I've got a few other second basemen at the higher level. Shortstops, I've got Seeger, and that's always a great one. But once again, if I miss him, i got a few guys down below. Third base, same thing. I've got a few guys that got Josh Donaldson. I've got the other Seeger brother. You know, so I've got guys at each position that I can get from my autograph league, and that's a lot of fun. It's something I've really enjoyed doing. Uh, I tend to do a lot of auction drafts when I do my autograph team, so I have a better chance of buying the guys specifically that I want. I'll spend a little bit more for a Kershaw, spend a little bit more for a Gary Sanchez, just because I know that a lot of the guys I have autographs of, they're going to be $1, $2, maybe 3 or 4 so I can afford them later on. The other thing I do is I really make sure that I focus on certain positions with each draft. So the last draft I did on Friday, I focused on pitching first. And so I really got starting pitching, and that was like my first four draft picks. And then I started going into the offense and getting that going. My first draft this year was all about offense. I took the best hitter I could every round for the first five rounds. And then I went into pitching. So. It's kind of neat to, to see how you play out. Some people try and get the best player available. And that's not a bad strategy, but I really try and find a blend. Now, I also focus on certain positions when I do Fantasy League. And the first position I really focus on is shortstop, followed by catcher. If I can get solid people in those two positions, I can usually fill in my team pretty easily around them. At first base, there's tons of power hitting first basemen. Third base, there's tons of power hitting third baseman. Outfield is just flowing. You can find guys on the waiver wire, usually, in the outfield. Now, once again, I play in 10 and 12 man leagues. So if you play in a 20 man league, you know, things are a little bit different. You're going to be scraping the barrel a little bit more. But if you're in a smaller league, 8, 10, 12 people, there's plenty of outfielders. There's plenty of third baseman and first baseman. Yeah, their average might be a little bit lower. You know, they're not going to be the Paul Goldschmidt, we have stolen bases, average, the whole deal. But 
you still get guys, still get some numbers you can put up there. So once again, I focus on shortstop and catcher. Those are my two big ones. Relief pitchers, you usually find those guys. Find out who's hot the first week of the, of the season and gets promoted to the closer role and you go pick them up. Um, find out which closers get hurt and who's going to fill in for their spots. So I'm usually not too worried about relievers. I do pick them up uh, about halfway through the draft. Starters, if there's a top-notch starter out there, um, I, I don't pass up on Kershaw very often unless I've got someone else that um, stands out. Nolan Rendo, Goldschmidt, of course if Trout or Altuve is available, I definitely take those guys first. But you know, I, I don't pass up on starting pitchers. But once again, I really focus on those two positions, shortstop and catcher, because they're not very deep, although shortstop's gotten a lot deeper over the last year and a half, two years, uh, with a lot of great young talent coming up. But catcher definitely, you got Posey, you got Sanchez, and you get that big drop off to the other guys. So um, really focus on that. But the biggest thing I have about fantasy baseball is I just love playing. I just love having fun. I love interacting with, with other fans. Um, I prefer to do, game, do leagues where I know the other players. Um, one, because making trades is a lot easier. I love making trades. I am a, I'm a trade fanatic. Uh, most people who don't know me and play in a league with me get annoyed with me because I keep sending trades out all the time. Um, so I finally, just, I stop after a while once I get rejected every single time and no one ever responds. Um, but fantasy baseball is just a ton of fun. I enjoy it more than football because football kind of seems lazy to me where you can set your roster on Tuesday and you'll be done for the week. I don't have to check it again until next week. Uh, whereas baseball, it's not necessarily a daily thing, but you want to check it a couple times a week just to switch your pitchers in, pull guys out, guys who are day to day, maybe pull them out as well. You know, pick up the the hot hand on the waiver wire, that type of stuff. So I love it because it's more active. It's one of the reasons why I love baseball altogether. So if you're doing fantasy ba baseball, you know, just have fun, enjoy it. You're playing baseball in a way. So it's something I love to do. It keeps me entertained. Let me do stuff late at night when I'm bored or in the morning when I first wake up. Instead of just sitting and staring at the TV, I can play a little fantasy baseball. So everybody, if you play fantasy baseball, tell me your tips down below in the comments. Let me know what you do to make your teams the best or what you do to make it more enjoyable. Are there things you do like my autograph teams that kind of are more fun for you? Do you select just every Mariner or every Dodger that is in the draft? What do you do? Leave a comment below and let me know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so when we make new videos, you know they're out, you can check them out. Once again, I'm Josh, the 90 Know It All, and have a good day.